Okay, so let's try something different today and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So I've scoured through the internet looking at different articles on photography. And today we are going to go through 22 of the internet's photography tips. And to make it more fun, we are going to be rating them. For the ranking list, we have the S tier as the highest, which is going to be the most essential of skills and practices to know. And the D tier will be the lowest, which are tips that you should just forget about because they're completely rubbish. And the first one is <laughs> it's gear matters. Well, as photographers, we definitely know that we dream about disgusting things about new and expensive better gear. So for this one, I'm going to be placing it in the S tier. <laughs> but seriously though, I am one who thinks that gear matters in a particular way for better shots, but it's probably in the B tier territory. And definitely, you shouldn't be relying on your gear to come up with quality images, but gear can definitely affect your perception about your own shots. So if the upgrade in sharpness, focal length, dynamic range, megapixels, and all that will motivate you or change the way you think about your images, then go ahead and upgrade it. And also the feel of the gear itself in your hands is very, very important. You can have the most expensive gear out there, but if you find it too troublesome to carry around or cumbersome, then it might even make you lose motivation about photography. And the next one is a classic, shoot in golden hour. Ah, this is going to be a bit of a controversial take, but I do think that it's an overrated advice because the magic moment can disappoint you and even break your dreams. Don't get me wrong, I do love shooting in golden hour and some of my favorite shots have been shot in this magical time. But the reason I think this is an overrated take is because if everyone else is shooting in golden hour, you will kind of feel bored about it and there's going to be an oversaturation of golden hour shots. And in addition, if you limit yourself to only shooting in a specific time of the day, then you miss out a lot of potential great shots that are shot outside of golden hour. So with this one, I'll put it in the B tier. So the next one is learning the exposure triangle. So this is really knowing how the shutter speed, ISO and aperture interplay and affect your shots. And there's no doubt about it, this is going to be an S tier advice. It's very, very essential for all photographers. And I say this because without understanding how, let's say, shutter speed affects your photos, then you wouldn't be able to know how to do creamy long exposures or that you can add motion blur in your shots when you drag your shutter speed or that aperture affects your depth of field. So knowing all these essential concepts will allow you for more creative choices out there and take full control of your camera settings for your desired output which now we move on to always shooting in manual mode. So, so I made a video previously where I joked that the M mode in your camera is reserved for all those masters out there. And I see texts around where people claim that true photographers always shoot in manual mode and everyone else who choose auto mode settings, aperture priority, are amateurs. I think this is a garbage tick and just seems very elitist. Or if you prefer really shooting in manual mode, then go ahead. Don't gatekeep people who prefer shooting in aperture priority most of the time, like myself. Uh, so I only really shoot manual mode when I want full control of my shutter speed for a given aperture. For example, when I do my astrophotography, when these camera settings are of much importance. But most of the time, I don't really care about shutter speed because it won't really change much how my image looks. So with that, this is going to be a D tier advice. And the next one, ooh, this is a good one. Subscribing, <laughs> no better advice out there, please. Investing in a good tripod. It's quite ironic because I handhold a lot of my shots, even in landscape photography. I feel that sometimes perfecting the framing, setting up a tripod will just get in the way of me getting the shots especially if the moment that I'm trying to capture is fast-paced or fleeting. But definitely, I think a tripod is very, very essential for every photographer who wants to pursue this long-term. And I have wasted a bit of money in the past buying cheap tripods that eventually broke down, corroded when I dipped them in seawater. So definitely an A tier advice if you're in it for the long run. Not the S tier because you don't need it for every situation. So next one, use of filters. So for example, ND filters, polarizers, graduated neutral density filters, UV filters. And of course I use polarizers to cut off the glare, ND filters to do some long exposures, but definitely they're not essentials to have. I almost always forget to bring them around anyway. So definitely see to your territory as good to have in your camera bag. So always find a foreground. This is probably more from my landscape photography experience where whenever I use a wide angle lens, of course you want to emphasize that foreground. But in my experience, you don't always need to have a foreground to come away with a good shot. 
So I'm going to put this in B tier territory or maybe even a C. Let me know what you think. So the next one is not really a tip that you'll see very often, but you will hear this from among the purists where editing is cheating. Sorry my dudes, <laughs> D tier advice. Because for me, editing is an important part of my workflow from taking the raws to the final output based on my own vision and creative output. So if you do sky replacements, like composites, then maybe that's going to be pushing it to the limits. But as long as you're having fun and transparent with it, then you do you. But also I think that cameras, no matter how good they are, will seldom replicate what you actually saw out there when you were there with your own eyes. With that, I think editing is very important. And this brings us to shooting in RAW. So recently I made a video about shooting in JPEGs to see if I'm editing RAWs for too long. Honestly, I was a bit surprised with the results of the JPEGs were already good enough for certain occasions. And this is especially helpful when you don't really want to spend too much time on editing. But as I mentioned, editing is important for my workflow to bring my images back to life. So with that, shooting in RAW is also a good practice. So beat your advice. Rule of thirds, rule of odds, golden ratio, leading lines, depth of field, contrast, natural framing. Do you really need to know all that? So for me, a photo just needs to do one thing, to make the viewer keep on viewing it for as long as possible. And understanding the composition is going to be key. I made a video recently about having to understand the rules before you can break the rules. While I do not think that you need to stick to these rules for every single situation, photography is an art form, so you shouldn't feel constrained about rules but you might have certain intentions in breaking them and to do this, you need to understand them. So for this S tier advice, learn your compositions. Keep things sharp and in focus. So if your shots are blurred and you miss focus on your subject, then the photo gives off an amateur feeling to it. And after all, the photo's job is to make the subject the star of the image. And all attention needs to go to it. However, it's not the end of the world if you slightly miss the focus, but the overall concept and message of the photo is still there. So for example, in this street shot, one of my favorites where the girl isn't perfectly in focus, there's slight motion blur, but I think it's a great concept. So for this one, I'm going to put this in A tier, probably almost S tier, so somewhere in between. Do not raise your ISO or always shoot in ISO 100. For those of you who don't know, the higher your ISO, the more your camera will amplify light but it will introduce some noise in your images. So you can think of ISO as your camera's sensitivity to light. I think that's how the internet usually terms ISO. So I don't really know the obsession of people about ISO 100 or 200. Well, noise definitely can change the impressions of people with your photo. Nowadays, there are a lot of tools to clean up the noise. And also cameras are improving in terms of noise handling and low light performance. So I think I'm going to be placing this in the D tier territory. Shoot at the lowest possible ISO while maintaining appropriate shutter speeds and aperture and balance them for a sharper image. So the next one is going to be looking for beautiful light. So photography is really about capturing light and then arranging what is going to be in front of you. Light can really make or break your image and it can be the ingredient that will make you stand out or make your photos unique. You can take the same subject, the same composition over and over again and still come away with different photos because of the difference in lighting conditions. And I want to encourage people to work with the light that you are provided and this is going to be a trump card that will make you the most flexible photographer that you can be. So I'm going to be placing this in the A or S tier as well. Shoot wide open. <laughs> This is a funny tip because there's a craze about shooting wide open apertures such that your background isn't completely discernible anymore. Honestly, I rarely shoot that much wide open because I think it's a much more impactful shot to show the surroundings and environment of your subject. And also, shooting your lens wide open will lead to suboptimal results for the pixel peepers out there. So again, if you force people to shoot in a particular way, then it's probably going to be a D tier advice. Choose the right settings for the type of shots that you want. Don't shoot at eye level. So this is going to be the same as those concepts you hear about zooming with your feet or moving with your feet. Try different perspectives. Different angles can give more interpretations. And also because people already see things at their eye level, then having that change can give that new experience to your audience. For that purpose alone, about trying different angles and changing up your compositions, moving around gets an A tier for me. So knowing and understanding the histogram, instant D tier for me because we all want to be cool in photography and we don't have that impression to look like nerds looking at mathematical graphs anyway. <laughs> 
<laughs> just kidding. So I do think that Instagram is an important tool that will let you know if you're already clipping your highlights and shadow details. You also have an overall representation of your exposure and it also allows you to do things like expose to the right while maintaining your highlights. So I think it's a very important skill to know and understand or interpret the histogram. But I'm going to be putting this in the B tier territory because there are a lot of tools at your disposal nowadays like the exposure compensation, the zebras function of your cameras, and also you can bracket your shots so that you are comfortable that you are having that full dynamic range of the scene. So the next one is an activity that I don't do too effectively as I would like, which is research and scouting. With the exception, of course, for my moon alignment shots, which really require for me to do some research in advance and scout my locations. Um, usually, I just go on a hike or wake up to explore new places and then keep a mental thought that, okay, this looks nice for another day. But I've seen some of the professional photographers talking about their scouting process where they catalog their shots, contain some geolocation tags in their scouted photos so that they can always revisit that same composition when the timing is right. So I'm going to be placing this preparation work into the eight year category because I think there's a lot of benefits in doing so. Like safety and risk assessments of the trail so you wouldn't get lost or injured. And if you're traveling and have limited time in a particular location, then advanced planning and research will give you additional insights so that you wouldn't be running around and chasing like a headless chicken. But just keep in mind that no matter how planned or researched you are, you're always at the mercy of the conditions that are provided to you on that day. Okay, so minding the distractions. I think I used this thumbnail because I took this photo in 2019 from the Komodo Islands in Indonesia. And of course, I wanted to photograph the Komodo dragon, but going home, oh my gosh, these are ugly shots. Tree branches everywhere and the Komodo dragon isn't really popping out. So very, very poor image. So definitely distractions like tree branches, rubbish in your foreground, or something popping out in the corners of your frame will definitely deter away from the subject of your photo. But I think I will put this in the good practice or B territory because for minor distractions, there are ways to clean it up in post-processing like the content aware tools, spot removal tools, or even just simply cropping your photo. I think one of the most obvious mistakes that can be spotted is a horizon that is not level. So the next tip is always straighten your horizon. And honestly, this is such a quick and easy fix to be done in post-processing anyway. So this is going to be at least a B tier tip and could be higher, but we can't have too many A's and S's after all. So the next one is going to be interesting, which is all about the accessories. For example, extra batteries, extra memory cards. So to me, I'm not a professional photographer. I don't do this full time. I am not hired by any clients and I can comfortably live by with just a couple of memory cards and a power bank. So to me, it feels like a C tier territory, but I can see this to be much higher for other photographers. For example, if you're facing clients, you want to fail proof your gig as much as possible. So the interpretation is up to you depending on your experience. And the next one is get closer. If your photos aren't good enough, then you aren't close enough. Famous photography quote, but there are different interpretations to it. In the literal sense, if you get closer, then it will make your shots feel more inviting for the viewer or give them the feeling that they are within the photo and stepping inside the frame. But it doesn't always have to be that way. And also there might be instances when you can't get closer anyway. Otherwise you might fall off a cliff. So I think I'm going to be putting this into the good advice or B tier territory. And the last one is to just have fun. Photography is a fun activity and the more fun you have doing it, the more inspired your shots will be. So definitely S tier advice. So let's have a conversation going. If you agree or disagree with this tier list, or if you think I've missed out some essential tips out there, I'm pretty sure I have, then leave it down below for others to benefit as well. And if you enjoyed this one, why don't you click on this video? I think you're going to enjoy it as well. See you there. Thanks for watching.